So in this video, I'm going to run through all of the calculations that can come up on paper one. If you're a combined student, I'll tell you when you can stop watching. If you're a triple student, you would need to watch it until the end. Um, so this first question is, relates to CC3, atomic structure, and you're being asked to calculate the relative atomic mass. So please press pause, have a go at doing the question yourself, and then press play when you're ready to see the answer. All right, so I've done the solution out here. All you need to do is you take the percentage and you multiply by the mass number. Take the percentage, multiply by the mass number, take the percentage, multiply by the mass number. These are dashes, they are not minuses. You can't have a minus mass. Once you've done your multiplication, you're gonna be adding these numbers together and because it's a percentage, you're dividing by 100. Your answer works out as being 28.11. I can check that my answer is definitely correct because you're asked to calculate the mass of silicon and this is on my periodic table. So if I find silicon, I can see the mass of silicon is 28. So on your periodic table, it's just, um, it'll just be 28, not 28.1, but that matches the answer that I have calculated. Um, please show your working, okay? If you do make a mistake and you get the wrong answer, uh, at least you've got your working, you'll get your first mark. Uh, other thing to note is typically we do divide by 100 because that's typically because our percentages will always add up to 100. There is an exception. If you are dealing with an alloy and you've got a metal mixed with some other element and they ask you to calculate the relative atomic mass of the element in an alloy, these percentages might not add up to 100. And if they don't add up to 100, then you'll add up the percentages and divide by whatever it is they add up to. Now, in typically in GCSEs, these numbers will always add up to 100, but if they didn't, you would divide by whatever the percentages add up to. Again, you can use your periodic table to check that your answer is always correct. Uh, I'm gonna give you another one on the next page. Again, if you just press, actually no, this one. So I'm not going to make you do because it's on a graph uh, and it'll be too difficult for you to see what's happening. But it's a similar idea. They've given you a graph though this time. You've got percentage abundance. So the percentage is on the y-axis and the mass I've circled here on the x-axis. So all you would need to do is do mass times percentage. That would be 46 times 8, 47 times 7, 48 times like, 75. So work all of those out. And then again, you're dividing by 100. So instead of writing out the information they've given it to you on a graph but the method you would use will be exactly the same so that's relative atomic mass from cc3 uh, the next question is percentage by mass and you're asked to calculate the percentage by mass of magnesium in magnesium carbonate and they give you all of the relevant numbers so again just press pause and have a go at that Right, so I've got the solution here. So what you would need to do is you're asked for the percentage by mass of magnesium. So in magnesium carbonate, there is only one magnesium and magnesium has a mass of 24. So I put 24 on the top. Then I work out the formula mass of magnesium carbonate. I've got one magnesium, which is 24, one carbon, which has a mass of 12, and I've got three oxygen. So I'm doing 16 times three. So it's the formula mass of magnesium on the top divided by the formula mass of magnesium carbonate. And then because they're asking for percentage, I times by 100 and I get an answer of 28.6. It doesn't specify significant figures, so you could round that up to 29 if you wish. Next question is very similar. So again, press pause and have a go at doing this by yourself. All right, so I reveal the answer for this one. It's a similar question but there is one difference. You're asked for chlorine, and this time you've got three chlorines in your formula. So on my top line, instead of just having 35.5, I'm gonna to have to times it by three. There are three chlorines, so I've got three times 35.5 on my top line. The bottom line is the same as what we saw before. You just get the formula mass. I've got one phosphorus with a mass of 31, an oxygen with a mass of 16, and three chlorines. So that's three times 35.5. And then again, I'm timesing it by 100 for a percentage, and I'm getting 69.4%. So this one, there was only one magnesium. So I just had 24 at the top. But when I had three chlorines in my formula, I had to take the mass and times it by three on my top line. So that's percentage by mass. Uh, the next one I've got is 
kind of just relative formula mass, which we've already calculated in the last question, but it's calculate the relative formula mass of copper carbonate. Again, they give you all the information that you need. So press pause and have a go. Right, this one, you have got one copper, which is 63.5, one oxygen, sorry, one carbon, which is 12, and then three oxygens, which is going to be 16 times three. I add all of that together and my formula mass is 123.5. So you get a mark for showing you're working and then a mark for your final answer. If you just wrote 123.5, you would get two marks. But if you were to make any slip, you won't can't get error carry forward if you just present an answer. Uh, and the next question is going to be a, a moles question. Okay, so you're going to have to use your G Mr. Moles triangle, which I've written for you here. And you're asked to calculate the number of moles in 45,000 grams of titanium chloride. So again, press pause, have a go. All right, so using my formula triangle, I can see that if I want to calculate moles, it's going to be grams divided by formula mass. They've given me grams in the question, 45,000, but I will need to calculate formula mass. Titanium chloride is TiCl4. Titanium has a mass of 48. Chlorine is 35.5, and I've got four of them. So it's mass divided by formula mass equals moles 236.8 again they haven't specified significant figures so you could have rounded that to 237 um the second part of the question i'll just show you it says show that 500 moles of magnesium added is an excess all right so if we have a look at my equation up here I've just calculated that I've got 236.8 grams of titanium chloride. And if I use my ratio between TiCl4 and magnesium, I'll see that it's one is to two because there's a big number two in front of magnesium. That means I will need double the moles of magnesium to react with the TiCl4 and it works out as 473.6. So that's the number of moles of magnesium that I need. But they're telling you that you're adding 500, okay? So if all I need is 473.6 but I have 500 then I've got more than I need and therefore I can say magnesium is in excess so just that little calculation there to calculate how much you need is enough to score you that mark all right the next one it's going to be a moles table, but just so you're aware of when to use these. So if I just look at the uh, question that I've given, so the equation I've got here, well, copper carbonate breaking down to form copper oxide and CO2. So let's just say they told me I started off with 100 grams of copper carbonate and they told me that I formed 75 grams of copper oxide and they just wanted to know how much CO2. Because of my law of conservation of mass, if I start with 100, I have to end with 100. And if I know 75 is copper oxide, well then the other, 25, must be the carbon dioxide. And I can solve that really quickly, just in one step. But what they'll do, more commonly, when you'll have to use a moles table, is they'll tell you the information about one. So they told me I've got 15 grams of pure copper carbonate. They're asking me about the mass of the solid, which is the mass of copper oxide. Because they haven't given me any other information, I can't just do that simple calculation that I did above. I've given one number 15 grams, but I haven't been given any other information. So I know that combined copper oxide and carbon dioxide must add up to 15 grams, but I don't know how much of it is copper oxide and how much of it is CO2. So this is when you're going to have to use a moles table. You'll turn grams into moles, you'll use the ratio in the question, and you'll be able to figure this out. So again, press pause here and have a go. All right, so here is my moles table. All right, you can see from my balanced chemical equation, I've included copper carbonate because I'm given information about it, and I've included copper oxide because I'm asked about it. I've left the CO2 out completely. I've written my G Mr. Moles and ratio down the side. I've got 15 grams of copper carbonate. I worked out the formula mass, okay? I've got one copper, I've got one carbon, I've got three oxygen. So I've got 15 divided by 123.5, and I worked out the number of moles. Now it's really important that you don't round here, okay? Keep everything to four or five decimal places until you get to the end. 
My ratio comes from the big numbers in the equation. Now, I don't have anything in front of either of these, so my ratio is just 1 is to 1. If these numbers are the same, then these numbers also have to be the same. Formula mass of copper oxide, I take my copper, I add my oxygen, I get 79.5, I multiply these two, and I get 9.7. I am told two significant figures, so that's the only acceptable answer there, 9.7 grams. I've got another one, very similar, in the moles table. So again, please press pause and actually have a go at this yourself. Make sure you can do it. All right, so if I reveal the answer, I am... Given information about magnesium, I am asked about magnesium oxide. So they're the two that I put into my table. And I write the formulas exactly as they are in the equation. And then I write my G Mr. Moles ratio. The 1.35 is the mass of magnesium. Formula mass of magnesium, I've just got one magnesium. So the formula mass is 24. We do not use the big numbers for formula mass. We use them for ratio only. So I do not multiply 24 by 2 got my mass, I've got my mister, so it's going to be G divided by mister, and I work out my moles. Again, I'm not rounding. And my ratio, this is when I use my big numbers. I've got a 2 there and a 2 there, so my ratio is 2 is to 2, but that can be simplified to 1 is to 1. If these two numbers are the same, then these two numbers are the same. My formula mass of MgO, again, I do not use that big 2, so I've got 1 magnesium and 1 oxygen. My formula mass is 40. And I multiply these two numbers to get 2.25, okay? So formula mass, you look at the small numbers in a formula, but you do not look at the big numbers. Big numbers is ratio only. I'm going to give you one other example of this. This question is kind of one of the trickier mole questions that have come up. Again, press pause and have a go. All right, so again, first thing I need to do is just pick out what's relevant. I am asked to calculate the mass of hydrated. If it's hydrated, it's got plenty of water. So I'm going to take the copper sulfate that has the water attached. Don't worry about the dot 5 H2O. It's not going to make a difference to how we do this question. So that's going to go into my table and I write it exactly as is. I'm also given information about water. So H2O will go into my table too. And then I've got my G Mr. Moles ratio. This is actually my final answer, so I'll be starting over here. So I've got my 4.5 grams. I can work out the formula mass of water. So I've got two H's and one O, it adds up to 18. Again, I'm not using that five when I'm calculating formula mass. I work out my moles by doing G divided by Mr. I get 0 0.25. Now the ratio here, you've got a 5 in front of the H2O and you've got nothing in front of this, so that means a 5 is to 1 ratio. This number on the left is 5 times smaller, so to get from here to here, I'm going to need to divide by 5 so that this number is also 5 times smaller. So just make sure that the relationship is the same. If the number on the left is smaller in the ratio, it should be smaller for moles. So I'm dividing by 5, I'm getting 0 0.05. And then need to times by formula mass, and they've given you that here. Okay, so another clue that this should be in your table. They give you the formula mass straight up. You don't need to calculate it. Then you're timesing these two numbers together, and you're getting an answer of 12.475. Right, next one, we're going to have a go at Avogadro's constants, which I'm going to have to just... Push my answer out of the way. Um, so... If they give you this number here, Avogadro's constant, you need to use it. If they don't give it to you, you do not use it. So you don't need to learn it off by heart. When they want you to use it, they will give it to you. Uh, and when you're using this number, you're going to find moles, and then you're going to multiply moles by this number. Um, so they've given you grams, you're going to need to find moles, and then you're going to need to multiply. So have a go at doing that for yourself. All right, so if you do this one for yourself, okay, as I said, you need to find moles so you can use this number. All right, so to do that, I take my grams, 3.94, and I divide by mister, which is going to be 197. So I divide by formula mass, and that's a... No, one nine, that's a 7, sorry, that should be a 7, divide by 197. Uh, that's my answer for moles. I times moles by Avogadro's constant, and I end up with this as my answer. Now, you can round that because I haven't said about significant figures. You can write that as 1.2 instead. Okay, uh, next question, something similar. 
okay just pay attention to the fact that you've got milligrams as your mass you're going to need to convert that to grams before you um before you go any further so again have a go all right solution for this one all right i'm going to turn my milligrams into grams so to do that it's 74 divided by 1000 once i've got it in grams i divide my grams by my formula mass the formula mass of copper is here for you 63.5 so this number here is now my moles and once i know moles i do moles multiply by avogadro's constant and i work out the number of atoms so moles times avogadro's is number of atoms you get one mark for each step that you complete next one i would say this is the hardest uh, I have, you'll be able to see a little bit of this to help you out, okay? Um, it gives you a formula of aluminium sulfate, and it wants to know the total number of atoms that combine to form 5.13 grams. So again, they've given you grams, you're going to need to find moles, and then you can use Avogadro's constant, but pay attention to the fact that it asks you for atoms. So I've helped you out here with formula mass. So again, press pause, have a go. Um, here is your solution all right so i helped you out here with formula with formula mass okay because it's a slightly trickier one you've got two aluminiums so it's 27 times 2 27 is for aluminium you've got what sorry you've got three sulfur sulfur is inside the bracket there's a three outside the bracket so it's going to be 32 times 3 and then you've got four oxygens in the bracket but there's a three outside the bracket brackets mean multiply just like they do in math so you've got 12 oxygens in total 16 is the mass of one oxygen you've got 12 of them so add up all of those numbers and i end up with 342 that's my formula mass once i know formula mass it's mass divided by formula mass equals moles so you got one mark for formula mass one mark for working at moles and then you need to times by avogadro's constant now what that does is it tells you how many aluminium sulfates you have but you're asked for the total number of atoms so once you know how many aluminium sulfates you have you need to multiply by the number of atoms in each aluminium sulfate so if i had three aluminium sulfates each aluminium sulfate contains 17 atoms so i do three times 17 but i don't just have three aluminium sulfates i've got this times this this is the number of aluminium sulfates i've got and once i know how many i've got i'm timesing by 17. so 17 is the number of atoms okay so we can see we've got two aluminiums we've got three sulfurs so that's five atoms plus the 12 oxygens i've got 17 atoms in total so i have to times it by 17 at the end so that's avogadro's constant and um, next we're going to move on to is kind of empirical and molecular and this one i've done for you so this is ethene and they ask you for the molecular and the empirical molecular is just how many atoms you've actually got so if i just count i can see i've got two carbon atoms and i've got four hydrogen atoms so i write that there is c2h4 the empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio so i need to look at the two numbers in my formula and divide across by the biggest number that goes in evenly the biggest number that goes in evenly to 2 and 4 is 2. And if I divide across by 2, I get CH2. So molecular formula tells you the actual number of atoms. I've got two carbons and four hydrogens in ethene. The empirical formula is just the simplest whole number ratio. It tells me I've got carbon and hydrogen. It tells me I've got double the number of hydrogens. But it doesn't tell me the number of atoms. It just tells me the ratio. And it has to be a whole number similar question they've given you this molecule and they've asked you for the empirical formula so the first thing you will do is calculate the molecular formula and that's just counting so if i count it up i've got six carbons i've got eight hydrogens i've got two oxygens there two nitrogens there and there and a sulfur it does not matter what order you write these atoms in this is my molecular formula. It tells me exactly how many atoms I've got, but you're asked for empirical, simplest whole number ratio. So I need to look at all the numbers in my formula and see if there's any number that will divide evenly into all numbers. 
because you've only got one sulfur, all right, you're not going to be able to divide by two because one over two is a half and a half is obviously not a whole number. So there's no number other than one that divides in evenly. And that means in this case, my empirical formula is exactly the same as the molecular formula. It cannot be simplified any further. And that is your final answer. Right, the next question is an actual calculation or empirical formula. So they've given you that you've got 2.24 grams of iron, 0.96 grams of oxygen. They want you to calculate empirical formula. So again, just press pause there and have a go. All right, so this one I do using a kind of similar table. I'll just cover this bit here at the end. So I've got my iron and I've got my oxygen. Now I know oxygen is diatomic, but oxygen is only diatomic when it is an element, when it hasn't reacted with anything. And we can see here that iron and oxygen are reacting. So it's not an element. So I don't write it as O2. Okay, I do not write it as O2. So I've got my mass of iron, my mass of oxygen. I divide by the formula mass, which is 56 for iron and 16 for oxygen. Again, it's not going to use a 32 there. You don't have two oxygens. It's not an element. It's in a compound. I do mass divided by formula mass to work out my moles. And what I need to do here is I need to look at these two numbers and ask myself which one is smaller. 0 0.04 is smaller, so I divide both numbers by the smaller number, divide them both by 0 0.04. This gives you 1 is to 1.5. Now, we need to have a whole number ratio. 1.5 is not a whole number. 0 0.5 is a half. To get rid of my half, I times it by 2 because two halves make a whole. But if I'm timesing the right hand side by two, I also times the left hand side by two. So my whole number ratio is two is to three. So these ratios are exactly the same. All I've done is I've gotten rid of that uh, decimal place. So I've now got a ratio of two is to three. And your final step, and don't forget this step because it's worth a mark, is to actually write the formula. So Fe has got a two next to it and O has got a three next to it. And your final mark just goes for writing that down. Let me give you another one of these. Okay, slightly different. Well, start of it's going to be the same. All right, in this one, you are asked to find the molecular formula of phosphorus oxide. So the first thing you're going to do is just calculate empirical formula. So just like we did before, use 1.24 grams of phosphorus and 1.6 grams of oxygen and just calculate empirical formula. If you know how to keep going, then then keep going. Um, but just get that far and I'll go through the rest of it with you. So just pause and do that much and then I'll do the rest with you. All right. So if you're calculating your empirical formula, you should have done this. I've got your phosphorus, you've got your oxygen, you divide mass by formula mass, you get moles. Pay attention here. All right. 0.04 is smaller than 0.1. So I'm dividing across by 0.04. I get a ratio of 1 is to 2.5. And just as we saw before, I can't just round that 0.5 up to 3. I'm going to need to multiply by 2. If I multiply the right by 2, I multiply the left by 2. And then to write my formula, it's P2O5. Now, this is my empirical formula. But you're asked for the molecular formula. In order to find a molecular formula, you need to follow three steps. Step one, you need to get the formula mass of the empirical formula. So we've just calculated the empirical formula. I now need to get the formula mass of it. I've got two phosphorus. I've got five oxygen. I add up these numbers and I work it out as one, four, two. Step number two, you are always going to be given a number in the question. You take that number, 2A4, divide it by your answer to step one, and you're going to get an answer of two. So that number in the question is the formula mass of the whole molecule. Step three, I take my answer to step two and I multiply it by my empirical formula. So P2O5 times two, two times two is four. So I've got P4, five times two is 10. I've got O10. So these three steps are needed to go from empirical formula to molecular formula. So if you didn't know them, write down those three steps. I'm gonna give you another question now that it tests you on the same thing. So let me cover up my answer here. Actually, yeah, that just gives you the answer. Being all right. So this is another question. All right. They've given you the empirical formula. You don't need to work it out. They've given you the formula mass of the whole molecule. So try and apply the three steps I went through before, and work out what the molecular formula of Y is. 
and then we'll solve the rest of the question together. So again, please press pause and have a go. All right, so formula mass of CH2 is 14. So I've got one carbon and two hydrogens. Then I take the number in my question and divide by my answer to step one. I get an answer of four. And then I take my answer to step two, multiply by the empirical formula, and I get C4H8. So C4H8 is the molecular formula of Y. Now you were ultimately asked to calculate the formula of X. And all I need to do once I know Y is I add it to the other molecule I've got here and I'm going to get X. So I've got six and four is 10. So I must have 10 carbons on the left hand side. 14 and eight is 22. So 22 hydrogen. So it's actually a cracking reaction. You start off with C10, H22, and you form these two molecules. All right, I think there's just, yeah, last one for combined uh, on concentration. And these ones are nice and straightforward. Okay, you are given grams, you are given centimeters cubed, and you're told in the question that your answer is going to be in grams per decimeters cubed. And the unit tells you what you need to do. It tells you that whatever you've got in grams goes into your calculator first, and this minus three means per decimeters cubed, and per means divide. So whatever you've got in grams, you're going to divide by whatever you've got in decimeters cubed. If you don't have anything in decimeters cubed, then you convert from centimeters cubed to decimeters by dividing by 1,000. So again, press pause, have a go. So I've done the solution here. 28.4 is grams. There's no issues with units there. Centimeters cubed needs to be converted to decimeters cubed. So I did 250 divided by 1,000. Now I've got grams, I've got decimeters cubed, I divide them and I get an answer of 114. It did say three significant figures, so my answer is 114. Right, if you're combined, um, that are they are all of the, well, the typical anyway, calculation questions. Maybe they'll go a little bit rogue, but they're the typical ones that come up year on year. Uh, if you're doing triple, I've got four more. So a first one is nice and straightforward. It's percentage yield. They literally give you the formula, actual over theoretical. They're asking you about ethanol. They tell you the actual mass that you obtain is 8.07. The theoretical mass is 53.8. Actual over theoretical times by 100. It's as simple as that. The only thing they could do to potentially make it difficult is they could ask you to calculate theoretical mass yourself. If we come up here, the equation if they told you started with 100 grams of sucrose they could ask you in theory how many grams of ethanol should you produce you just do your standard moles table so the number that you work out in your moles table that is theoretical yield it's the mass that you should get in theory once you've got your theoretical they'll always tell you your actual and then it's actual divided by theoretical times by 100. Other question, atom economy, again, super straightforward. They're going to ask you about one product in particular. In this case, they ask you about ethanol, and it's the formula mass of ethanol divided by the formula mass of all products. In this case, you do use your big numbers with formula mass. We don't in our moles tables, but we do here. So I'm producing four moles of ethanol. So it's four times 46. They even tell me the formula mass of ethanol. I don't need to work it out. So I've got four times 46, because that's the product I care about. So it's the formula mass of the product I'm interested in over the formula mass of all products. So it's gonna be four times 46 again, and four times 44 for the four CO2s. You're gonna get your answer as a percentage, so you times it by 100. You could do formula mass of your product over the formula mass of all of the reactants you'll get exactly the same answer but because you've already had to work out the formula mass of the ethanol you may as well stick with that instead of trying to work out the formula mass of your reactants too so this way it's just a little bit quicker but both will give you the right answer um, so yes you do use your big numbers when you're working out your formula mass in this case you don't when you're doing moles tables uh, interesting little bit here at the bottom Atom economy is all about uh, how many of the atoms that you start with end up in the product that you care about. At the moment, you can see that there's CO2 is an extra product, which means a lot of my atoms that I'm starting with are ending up in a product that I don't care about, a product that is a waste. But if I can find a way to use that waste product, like in fizzy drinks, and I'm making my waste product useful, my atom economy will go to 100%. Nothing is wasted. Uh, next one, you have got a titration calculation. So have a go at doing this one by yourself. 
All right, so titration calculation, I do them in a table, but your formula is different. Not not using G Mr. Moles, I'm given volume, I'm given concentration, so I'm using moles over volume times concentration. I'm given info about H2SO4 and KOH, so they're the two in my table. Volume, concentration, moles, ratio down the side. Your volumes need to be in decimeters cubed, so I'm taking my 12.15, dividing it by 1,000. Concentration I've got 0 0.140, uh, and to work out moles according to my triangle, it's volume times concentration. So I multiply these two and I get this. Don't round, keep everything uh, to at least four or five decimal places until the end. My ratio is one is to two, so I'm timesing this by two. Then I've got my moles, I've got my volume, again, also in decimeters cubed, and I'm doing moles divided by volume equals concentration. Last one is your molar volume so uh, in this case when you're given this number 24 it should trigger this formula triangle in your memory uh, volume over moles divided by uh, sorry volume over moles times molar volume molar volume always has the number 24 it's the volume that one mole of gas will take up regardless of what the gas is so again have a go at this one All right, so they've given me the volume of propane, 900 decimeters cubed. If I've got volume and I want to get moles, I'm going to do volume divided by 24, and I get 37.5. They're asking me about hydrogen. I've got a 1 is to 1 ratio, so therefore I've got 37.5 moles of hydrogen too. Now, there's no point in filling in the rest of this table because they don't ask you for the volume of hydrogen. They ask you for the mass. And once I know moles of hydrogen, I'm going to do moles times mr to end up with mass and the formula mass of hydrogen is just two that gives me mass in grams g mr moles is always going to be mass in grams i mass for mass in kilograms so once i've got grams i need to divide by 1000 in order to convert it to kilograms uh, if any of those calculations caused you a lot of bother then i would suggest going on to physics and maths teacher and finding more of the same type or going back to your booklet and finding more of the same type but that's generally um you know a kind of an overview of the questions the calculation questions that are most typically asked